This will please you, Kev. Uh, you know that ridiculous, uh, um, the latest St George's Cross uh, travesty, the one that's supposed to be on the Team GB yep, yeah, costume? Yeah. Of course it's uh, blue and pink because that's apparently representative of inclusion. Oh, well, you know, I don't know, gender-specific colours. Yeah. Um, that is not going to be used on the athletes themselves. It's just some sort of rubbish merchandise that much like Nike's attempt to redesign the football shirt with the fake news St George's Cross also is not going to be bought. Team GB athletes are going to dress like Team GB athletes. Athletes. Um, in thank the union goodness jet. for that. This is just silly. Just stop it. I don't know why everything now has to fall under the ban of inclusivity, diversity. A, a flag is just inclusive in its own right. It just says this is the country representing where everybody lives. Whether you're rich, poor, black, white, Muslim, Sikh, Jedi, Christian, you're from the United Kingdom. That is what the flag says. You don't need to turn it into this 1990s magic eye monstrosity. Yeah. That's just utterly pointless. This is what the there's a company called This Away who came up with this concept. They said uh, uh, that uh, this was a way of refreshing Team GB's colour palette. They well, don't need to refresh Team GB's colour palette. Use the Union Jack. And by the way, so the, the, the athletes themselves will be draped quite correctly in the Union Jack, but this merchandise is still available to buy if you want <laughs> it. This, of course, follows on last week's story about the uh, Red Cross. Uh, the St George's Cross being changed on the back of the England Street, a playful reimagining by Nike. Leave our flags yeah. alone. All Leave our rubbish. flags alone. Yeah. What, 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 why, why, do, why would anyone want to buy that monstrosity no, no. of a colour mess? It's ridiculous. It's all going to end up in the Sports Direct bargain bin for 99p yeah. next Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. So Leave uh, our, help yourself. Leave the flags alone. Leave our flags alone. People don't like it. They don't want it. No. Stop playfully reimagining them. As I keep saying about it's not Nike, painful. it's as, sacrilegious. Yeah, but so, as I keep saying about Nike, uh, an American company, uh, you want to playfully reimagine a flag? Reimagine your own flag, the uh, Stars and Stripes. <laughs> See how that goes down with Americans. It will go down about as well as it goes down with us. And it's a no, no, no. You can stick your reimagining where the sun don't shine. Let's move on. Uh, I didn't quite make the <coughs> Forbes list of billionaires <laughs> this year. That's because uh, you had to pay a load of tax earlier, wasn't it? Basically, yeah. Yeah. you were. That's there, that was one of, that was one of the that. reasons. <laughs> one of the reasons. Um, Taylor Swift has joined the Billionaires Club. Uh, there are more billionaires than ever before. Uh, over two thousand, I think. Two thousand seven hundred or so. Uh, just so Taylor Swift has come in uh, way down the list, but. Uh, uh, let's uh, give you the uh, top ten, as it were. It's not Elon Musk or Jeff Be Bezos. Uh, Elon Musk comes in at second with $194 billion. Uh, Jeff Bezos, $194, the same. Uh, so they're sharing two and third. Mark Zuckerberg, $177 billion. Who comes in first? It is <coughs> the head of the Louis Vuitton uh, luggage company, Bernard Arnault and his family, and they are worth an eye-watering yeah. $233 billion billion dollars. Well, you know, um, the beauty and fashion industries are very expensive. And they all sort of end up being these huge conglomerates and monopolies and buying each other. Of course, the Betancourt was always uh, the French... Um elite when it came to yeah. having all the money. That's the L'Oreal family. Gave lots of money to Sarkozy, I think. Yeah. Um, but they're not even in the top ten anymore. No women in the top ten, but apparently there are now more women in the rich list, the billionaires rich list, than there's ever been. But looking at some of the sort of highest uh, rated women, I'm um, sad to <laughs> Basically, well, hey. but, you know, that's a woman's work, isn't it? Well yeah. done. Yeah. Well, well, however you made your money, respect. Uh, so uh, let's move on. Leave the billionaires to stew. More of that later on. Cross talk. Uh, uh, Croydon. Talking about yeah, talking Croydon. about beauty. Birthplace of Kate Moss. Uh, mm. There, you would imagine the connection to glamour and beauty would end, but no, <laughs> no. Uh, this South London skyscraper town, famous for its concrete uh, landscape. Uh, is apparently Britain's beauty capital with more hair and makeup workers as residents than any where else in the country? Go figure. What do you reckon? That doesn't actually surprise me. When you think now, if you look around sort of like the sort of oh, all high streets in the UK, the proliferation of nail parlours, some are nice, you know, sort of shellac using uh, legit places. Others are fronts for, I don't know, Vietnamese drugs, gangs to launder their money. Um, similarly with hair salons, Turkish barbers everywhere. I mean, we have gone beauty mad, haven't we? It's because everyone wants to be on Instagram now. So everyone's having to constantly get their hair extensions, their Botox, their yeah, fake why coin? Because it's that sort of place, isn't it?
<laughs> that doesn't mean what anything. Is? Uh, is this like well, look, here's some. Nice? Anyway, here's some statistics. Here's I do know. Here's some statistics. Uh, Thirty-two. Uh, one in 32 people in Croydon, uh, which was described by David Bowie once as complete concrete <laughs> hell. Uh, one in 32 people in Croydon uh, are employed in beauty jobs. Uh, that's uh, more than four times as many as the national average. Uh, 6,200 of the town's 203,000 workers uh, are either hair, makeup, or beauty consultants working in salons, etc., etc. So, uh, just a strange statistic. Croydon is the beauty capital of the world. If you pass through Croydon, trust me, you would not imagine that. I was going to say, by the looks of things, you haven't passed through Croydon. Yeah, the recently. town itself is not beautiful. I'm sure <laughs> the people who live there are beautiful, not only outwardly but inwardly as well uh now oh, talking Miss... of beautiful people with she's one of my she's, heroes she's a beautiful swimming person. legend sharon <laughs> davis uh has slammed the disgusting sexism uh of a canadian cycle race in which a trans woman uh, got the bronze medal couldn't even win for god's sake but, <laughs> yeah, but more to the point she says that hundreds of males well, all over are. the world yeah. are stealing the places and prizes Just in female time sports. Time and time again, we see this happening. America, Australia, all around the world. Men can't win in their own category, and so they suddenly go, "I'm going to stick a wig on and uh, race as a woman or compete as a woman." Whether it's even things like chess and darts, and guess what? They beat the woman because uh, it's again biological fact that men tend to be physically more capable than women in a range of areas. And so, you know, they, they, they just have an unfair advantage. And we just keep seeing this time and time again. Every day you open the newspaper, there's a new jock in a frock who's yeah. competed in some sort of sport on a woman missing out as a result. It gets really serious. I mean, cycling's one thing. It gets really serious when it's contact sports. We reported the other day, didn't yeah. we, on that um, the, 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 the rugby Australian team, football, team. American yeah. rules, was it? I don't know, Australian rules, something, I don't know. Australian team. And it was no football. It was actually football. Yeah, they won ten, ten nil, ten and six nil, nil, and six and goals were scored by Jeff with his uh, two yeah. two on. Or whatever yeah, what, he was one called. trans woman player <clears throat> scored six goals in a ten nil victory. And they were pulling they the women stormed, out of playing. You know, so in other words, this is just not fair. It's just it's not fair. Utterly. And why, oh why, do athletic bodies around the world continue to allow, you know, people, blokes who came like forty second in their last running event, uh, they then become trans women. And guess what? In their next and their next event, you know, they come first uh, when they're competing as a trans it woman. It makes a mockery of a lot does. of them. Now,